Hello everyone, this is Karen. Welcome back everybody, I am Shane. Today we're looking at part two of water hyacinth, weed or wonder, and the vocabulary words are fuel. Fuel. Many space heaters are electric, while others are fueled by gas. Harmful. Harmful. My doctor told me the medicine might have harmful side effects. Mm. Weave. Weave. Anne wove a beautiful blanket for her daughter. Demanding. Demanding. Dana has a very demanding job that requires her to work an average of 60 hours a week. Mm. Location. Location. The popular fast food chain opened up a new location in downtown Los Angeles. My hometown. All right. Yeah. Okay, but we're still talking about water hyacinth, right? I don't think I ever saw water hyacinth in LA. Never. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> I've never actually never seen one before. So originally, it comes from the Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. Originally, yeah. That's right. And remember, we said that you know at the beginning, a lot of people will find this plant to be really beautiful, yep. but then there there were real lights, it would cause a lot of problems. So some people are using, because it makes so much of this, probably we do need to make sure that we pull some of this off and then you can be used as a resource, right? You are right. So people are using it as a biofuel mm -hmm. because you can burn it instead of firewood and it cl it's much cleaner when you burn it, which means it's better for the environment and better for your lungs. And then also in Nigeria and yeah. India, some people think of it, oh, wow, this plant is very durable. So what they're doing is that they're using it to maybe like, well, weave some baskets oh. or make some crafts. And it can last for quite a long time. Yeah, and this can create jobs in places where there are otherwise no jobs because you can sell these crafts that you make. You are right. So it's important mm. to understand this plan and then to understand and learn about the pros and cons. Yeah, when you introduce a new species into a new environment, it could have some catastrophic results. That's so right. So you need to be sure you know what you're doing and do the research first. Definitely. Okay, let's learn more about water hyacinth. All right. Water hyacinth, weed or wonder. As an example of turning a negative into a positive, people have found some interesting uses for water hyacinths. One way is as a form of biofuel. In Kenya, the water hyacinth is actually helping fishermen by fueling biogas stoves. Biogas burns much cleaner compared to firewood, so less toxic emissions are produced. Because these fishermen spend so much time cooking fish, less harmful smoke means fewer lung diseases. Today's lesson is called Water Hyacinth, Weed or Wonder, Part 2. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. And I'm Mike. We're talking about the plant, the water hyacinth, a native of South America. It's now found on all the major continents around the world. This beautiful lake or river plant, it floats on the surface of the water, beautiful purple flowers. It would be seen as just a you know lovely thing to have in your garden, but it grows really fast. It blocks out the sun, killing all the other life, takes away the oxygen, killing animals and other plants in the lakes. And if you try to get rid of it, it is really hard because the seeds can last for, for seasons and then just come right back. It sounds like a weed, Mike. It sounds it's, like a weed. It sounds an like an unwanted a... plant that chokes the life out of the other plants in your garden. Sounds yeah. like a weed, a weed, a bad weed, a nasty weed. But apparently, huh? there are some good things to be had when it comes to water hyacinth. Really? And today we'll be talking about how maybe, just maybe, water hyacinth could actually be a wonder and not a weed. Now, mm -hmm. as an example of turning a negative into a positive, as an example of turning something bad into something good, people have found some interesting uses for water hyacinths. Yeah, one way is as a form of biofuel. Excuse me, what? One way is as a form of biofuel. Using so move, move aside gasoline. We're gonna use water hyacinth to power everything now. Were you gonna use it to like make machines run like gasoline or natural gas? You got it, dude. A flower? A big nasty flower weed thing 
we can turn it into a biofuel. I'm willing to learn more. Let's, well, let's read on. It says in Kenya, in Kenya, the water hyacinth is actually helping fishermen by fueling biogas stoves. Yeah, they're burning it to per, to make fire in their stoves as you get those little cans of gas to fire up your little barbecue、mm. or something like this. This is happening in Kenya, in Africa, and these fishermen have found a way to turn this unwanted but beautiful flower into fuel or gas for their stoves. Which is, which is this is kind of cool. It is very say. cool. I have no idea how it works, well, but it's cool. Wait, we'll learn more about that soon. But、okay. for now, let's talk about fuel. Earlier, I talked about Gasoline. People put gasoline in their cars, and it allows those cars to go to run. That's the word "fuel" being used as a noun. Something like gasoline or wood or coal, something that you burn, let's say, to create energy. That would be a fuel. That's the word as a noun. If I were to use this word as a verb, though, if something fuels something else, it provides that thing with energy or fuel. So if this stuff is helping to Fuel stoves. It is providing stuff that can be burned in these stoves so that the stoves work. Anyways, let's look at an example sentence for the word fuel. Many space heaters are electric, while others are fueled by gas. You need gasoline or some form of gas to fuel. These space heaters. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. All right. So, how does this work? It says, well, biogas burns much cleaner compared to firewood, so less toxic emissions are produced.、Mm. However, they can turn the hyacinth into the fuel. That fuel is called biogas, gas that comes from living things. When you actually burn it, it's much cleaner burning than something like wood. In other words, the smoke won't have all those dangerous. Dangerous things in them, and for people who cook their food and spend、mm -hmm. a lot of time around a fire like that, that is a huge difference and can really be a much healthier way of doing things. Yeah, because these fishermen, by the way, spend so much time cooking fish, less harmful smoke. Means fewer lung diseases.、Right. There you go. So they're burning the they're burning this biogas, and it is good for them. It's not harmful. It's not as harmful, and that of course that is good for your health because harmful things are full of harm for you. They're full of harm or danger or something bad. Something harmful is dangerous. It's bad for you. Smoking is harmful for your health. I think people have heard that, learned that, seen that before. Because something is harmful is something you stay away from, and people like to be warned of dangers like that. For example, my doctor told me the medicine might have harmful side effects.、Ah, so it might help my disease, but other problems might come up. Like I'll have an Upset stomach or a headache or something. So these are bad side effects. But sometimes you can't avoid harmful things like smoke in the air. But you can make that smoke less harmful. There you go. All right, folks. It's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be back soon. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。我们在第一天的课文提到说，布袋莲原生于亚马逊河流域。那人们觉得它很美，就把它引进到世界各地。而由于这种植物它生长非常快速，在每个地方都产生了问题。不过呢，人们已经把这种缺点转化成优点喽，帮布袋莲找到一些有趣的用途。第一种呢，是把它拿来当做生殖燃料，像在肯亚。布袋莲就被用来当做这种生殖沼气炉的燃料，这对渔夫来说是很有帮助的，因为生殖瓦斯的燃烧会比柴火干净，产生的有毒排放物会比较少。那么渔夫往往都要花很久的时间在煮鱼，所以如果改用布袋莲来当这种生殖燃料，它所排放的有害烟雾就会比较少。那也就意味着不会有肺部的疾病了，比较不会有这样的状况。好，那么先来看单字 fuel。Fuel 可以当动词来指给什么添加燃料，当名词就表示燃料。那在前面加上字首 b i o 表示生物或是生命体，合在一起 biofuel。Biofuel 就表示生殖燃料，什么意思啊？它就是用有机生物所产生或是制造的燃料啦。好，那么课文还有用到 biogas， biogas 则是指生殖气体、生物气体。下一个单词 harmful， 
harmful 是形容有害的。那补充单字 firewood。Firewood 表示木柴、柴火。那么 toxic, toxic 则是形容有毒的。接华课文中 ，Water hyacinth, weed or wonder. Other communities in Nigeria and India use the plants to create handmade crafts. After the plants are dried, they can be woven into baskets and furniture. This creates jobs for people who don't have as many chances to work. Women who stay home with their families and people who are unable to work demanding jobs can weave hyacinth products to support themselves and their loved ones. Okay, before the break, we were talking about fishermen in Kenya. Let's move on. Other communities in Nigeria and India use the plants to create. Handmade craft. So there you go. Biofuel in in one place, craft making material in another. Starting to see that the water hyacinth has a few more good things going for it than we learned about in day one. So yeah, biogas. We can use it as fuel, and you can also use the plant material itself to make things, to make handicrafts. It says after the plants are dried, they can be woven. Into baskets and furniture. So I guess you strip off the leaves, lay them out in the sun. When they're dried and look stronger and tougher, then you can turn them into things people can use that are natural, cheaper. You don't have to use plastics and、mm -hmm. stuff like that.、There、It's all good. There you go. Also, we have the word woven in this sentence. It's from the verb weave. Okay. Now here, if you weave something like a basket, let's say,、mm -hmm. basically you take strips of material and you interlace it. Okay, you bring something together. Strips of material, let's say, you bring them together by following a pattern with these strips. Okay, for example, Anne wove a beautiful blanket for her daughter. Yes, you can weave things like blankets and baskets and sweaters and stuff like that. That's often what people do when they're weaving. They're making something. Like this. Now, this creates jobs, okay, for people who don't have as many chances to work. So there's plenty of water hyacinth. Yes, plenty of demand for water hyacinth craft. So people can now make work, okay, or they can at least have jobs by weaving stuff with water hyacinth, whereas before. They couldn't, and even better, it will actually help people who might not have been able to have a job before.、Mm. Not everyone can spend eight or ten hours、yep. going to work at a factory or something like that. If they can do the work at home, it's even more convenient for them. It says women who stay home with their families and people who are unable to work demanding jobs can weave hyacinth products to support themselves. And their loved ones. Something that's demanding. It's difficult. It asks a lot of you. You have to put in a lot of time or energy or something like that. All right. So you know, joining a joining a gym if you really want to lose a lot of weight that can be demanding. Working as a as a young doctor in a in a hospital that can be very demanding. They often often have to work 48 hours without a break.、Mm. So it's difficult. You need dedication. You need to stick to it. But it is not. Not easy. It's demanding. For example, Dana has a very demanding job that requires her to work an average of 60 hours a week. Maybe she's a lawyer, works in a big bank. I don't know, something like that. But that's a lot of work. That's a lot of time. Most people work about 40 hours a week, so 60 is very demanding. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be back after this. 刚刚说到布袋莲的第一种用途是可以当生殖燃料，那我们接着来看第二种用途是把布袋莲拿来做成手工艺品。那这边补充一下 ，handmade，handmade handmade 就是形容手工的。那么课文是用 handmade crafts 来指手工艺品。那我们也可以学一下 handicraft，h a n d i c r a f t，handicraft 也可以用来指手工艺品，它是当名词。好，那课文提到说，在奈及利亚和印度的其他社区呢，有使用布袋莲来做手工艺品。那这些植物晒干之后，它可以被织成篮子啊，或是家具，可以帮助那些没有什么工作机会的人来创造工作。而待在家里陪伴家人的女性，还有那些没办法做粗重工作的人，也可以靠着编织布袋莲来养活自己，养活家人。这边出现两个单字 ，weave。
，weave 是动词，表示编织。那它的动词三态有两组 ，weave, wove, woven， 或者是 weave, weaved, weaved。好，那 Jeff 老师在解释单字时用到 interlace 这个字 ，i n t e r l a c e。interlace 表示使什么交织、交错，或是使什么结合。下一个单词 demanding demanding， 它是形容费时费力的、耗费精力的，或者是要求严苛的。好，那 Mike 老师刚刚用到 dedication 这个字，则是指贡献、奉献，它是拼作 d e d i c a t i o n dedication， 它也可以表达专心致力的意思。接华课文中。Water hyacinth, weed or wonder. The water hyacinth was originally brought to new places because people thought it looked pretty floating in their ponds and rivers, but it quickly became a problem. Even though we now have ways to make it useful, it's important that people think about the environment before bringing plants to new locations. Okay, everyone, we're still talking about water hyacinth. How fascinating! The water hyacinth, by the way. Was originally brought to new places because people thought it looked pretty floating in their ponds and rivers, but it quickly became a problem. Remember, these plants spread quite quickly. Absolutely. Next time you're at the airport and they're asking you about any fruits or plants or vegetables you might have, this is why water hyacinths hundreds of years ago probably. Were taken out of their natural habitat and quickly became a problem. They grow so fast. Very, very interesting stuff. Okay, let's move on and see what it says next. There, even though we now have ways to make it useful, you know, biogas, turning it into handicraft. So even though we now have ways to make it useful, it's important that people think about the environment before bringing plants. To new locations. That's right. Plants that were great in one part of the world can be really terrible in other parts of the world. The other thing is, of course, that plants also often come with their own, you know, bugs or、sure. bacteria that can also cause problems. So that's why it's a good idea to leave all that stuff at home when you're traveling. Don't、mm-hmm. bring it to new locations. Good idea. Good point. Now, before we go ahead and finish our article, we need to talk about the noun location. The location of something is where it is. That's all. That's all there is to it. For example, the popular fast food chain opened up a new location in downtown Los Angeles. So, where is this new fast food chain restaurant? It's in downtown Los Angeles. That's its location. That's where it is. That's where it's located. Yeah, location is the noun. Locate would be the verb. Anyways. We are done with our article now, and it's time for us to move on to the what do you think question. Mike, can you think of any other uses for water hyacinth? Explain how you could use the plant. Well, I have to admit, I'm not really very familiar with the water hyacinth. But what about turning it into a food of some kind? If people can eat it, if it can be used in cooking, or something like that, you know, some way we can use this plant in large amounts. That would probably be a good thing because it sounds like there's a lot of it out there, and it is a problem. But I'd have to learn more about the plant itself. Fingers crossed. I'm hoping the water hyacinth isn't deadly poisonous. Then maybe、mm. we we can't eat it. Yeah, all right,、bad. all right, folks. With that, our lesson has now come to an end, and it's time for us to say bye bye. Take care. 虽然说人们已经找到方法让布袋莲从杂草变成有用的植物，可是要把植物带到一个新的地点之前，还是要考虑到它对环境的影响哦。否则，再漂亮的植物，最后还是有可能会成为令人头痛的大问题。好，我们最后来看单字 location。location 表示地点、位置。那它的动词是 locate， 或是念作 locate， 可以用来表达位于什么，坐落于什么，也可以表达出找出什么什么的位置。好，那么以上是今天的讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有三个，第一个是 look， 做连缀动词的用法。
。第二个是 make 加受词加受词补语。第三个是 it's important 再加 that 子句。好，我们先来学 look 做连缀动词的用法。Look 当连缀动词表示看起来怎么样怎么样，后面可以接形容词或是接 like 加名词。我们来造两个例句。You look different. Did you get a haircut? 哎，你看起来不太一样哎。嗯，你是不是有剪头发？好，那么第二个例句是 The building looks like a spaceship. 那栋建筑看起来像太空船。好，那接着来学 make 加受词加受词补语。make 加受词加受词补语就表示使某人或某事物成为怎么样，变得怎么样。其中这个动词 make 在这边呢，是指使得或者让什么什么变得。那么受词补语我们可以用形容词或者是名词。那一样来造两个例句。Listening to music makes me happy. 听音乐让我变得快乐。那这边我们受词补语就是用形容词 happy。His performance in the movie made him a superstar. 他在那部电影里面的演出使他成为超级巨星。那这边我们就是用名词 a superstar 来当补语用。那最后来学 it's important that 主词加动词。好 ，it's important 再加 that 子句是用来表达什么什么是很重要的。这个 it 是虚主词，用来代替后面的 that 子句，像是 it's important that everyone should arrive on time， 每个人都准时抵达是很重要的哦，不准迟到哦。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见了，拜拜。Hello, everybody. Welcome to English in Action. Action. I'm Holly. Wait, wait, what? I'm, oh, yeah, I'm Shane. I'm Shane. Okay. You're Holly, right? Yes, I'm Holly. Okay. <laughs> anyway, right. the topic. Yeah, let me let me try to read the the topic. Okay, let me see if I can get this one. Do you think I can do it? You 办得到的 Okay, I think I I think I got it then. Okay.、Uh, no, you 办得到的我知道啊，我我我也觉得我办得到的。Just. 哦，你办得到的啊！今天的主题就就是，那我们可以进入对话喽。嗯 ，OK， 好，那进对话喽。你你办得到的、啊。I'm so nervous about this exam. What if I don't pass? You got this. Just take a deep breath, and you'll do great. Come on, just breathe. Come on, do breathing. Come on, you got right, this. All right, you got I got this. this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you got this. You just is. You 拥有了这个。对哈。You got this. 应该说是 You got this covered. You got this. Uh. Hmm. You can do it. The easy. 对，其实其实英文有时候有一些句子都不是在翻成中文都很奇怪。对，不是真的你拥有这东西，而是啊，你好像抓住它，所以你、嗯、你不会那么紧张了。对，就是你真的没问题。You got this. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry. Or you could say you can pull this off. <laughs> pull this off is 真的是把它拉下来吗？不是。Okay, pull this off. 其实就是你可以把这件事情做得很好。呃、uh, ，对。对，可是我觉得有可能这个是真的有问题在。可是你可以想个办法，你真的可以 pull this off。对，把它弄掉。<laughs> 对。<laughs> Or you can do this.、Uh. 直接的，就是非常直接。你可以做到， mm. 你做得到。You can do this. Okay.、Mm. If if you're having trouble with English, don't worry about this. You, you can do this. You got this. You got this. You got this. Yeah. Just call us. You got this. You got this. You can pull this off. You can pull this off. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this.